Welcome TDC viewers. As you might be aware, electrolytic oxidations require anodes that do not disintegrate when used. In this video, I will be making a lead dioxide anode for a variety of electrochemical processes like perchlorate and perchlorate preparations. To start, get a 100ml beaker, a pre-cleaned graphite working electrode, a measuring cylinder, a silver silver chloride reference electrode, a 29.85 gram per litre copper nitrate solution, a 348 gram per litre lead nitrate solution, a copper rod counter electrode, and a heating mantle. To carry out the electrodeposition of lead dioxide, we need to use an electrochemical potentiostat, which is controlled by the computer. Before the experiment, weigh the pre-cleaned graphite electrode on a balance, which is 7.1 grams. Okay, get the measuring cylinder and measure out 40 ml of copper nitrate. Then pour the contents into the beaker. Then measure out 40 ml of lead nitrate and pour contents into the beaker. After the addition of the plating solution, place the cell onto the heating mantle and heat until temperature registers between 40 to 60 degrees on the thermometer. Attach the pre cleaned graphite working electrode onto the lower middle side of the cell followed by the copper rod counter electrode to the top right side of the cell. And then the silver silver chloride reference electrode to the upper left side of the cell, making sure the distances of the electrodes are around 0.5 centimeters apart. For the electrical connections to the potentiostat, there is the red clip which is for the counter electrode connection, the green clip which is for the working electrode connection, and then the white clip for the reference electrode connection. Attach the white clip to the silver silver chloride reference electrode, the red clip to the copper counter electrode, and the green clip to the graphite working electrode. To start the experiment, we need to select the correct electrochemical technique on the computer program, which is the multi-potential steps technique. In this technique, we can hold a particular potential for a period of time. For our case, a potential of 2.2 volts and 10,000 seconds, which is about 2.8 hours, is selected. Once the parameters are all set, press OK. While the experiment is running, let's have a look at the chemistry behind it. During electrolysis, the acidity of the electrolyte gradually increases, and the concentration of lead 2 plus ions decreases according to the following reaction. As it can be seen in the equation, lead metal is produced at the cathode, which is a problem. To prevent lead, metal from being formed, a soluble copper salt, in this case copper nitrate, is added to the bath in order to prevent the deposition of lead metal. A soluble copper salt is used because copper is more electropositive than lead in the electrochemical series and therefore deposits preferentially on the cathode. During the course of the deposition, bubbles can be seen scattered over the graphite electrode. This is a serious problem as the presence of these bubbles doesn't give a smooth and adherent deposit of lead dioxide. It's been found that rotation or oscillation of the anode, effect of additives to the bath, for example, cetyl, trimethyl ammonium bromide, and the influence of ultrasonics will give an adherent, smooth, and pinhole free deposit of lead dioxide. After the deposition, remove the graphite substrate lead dioxide electrode and rinse with water and dry. 
As it can be seen, the lead dioxide deposit consists of pinholes and some cracks. Despite this, the deposit seems to be quite adherent. I'll be making more videos to test the durability and efficiency of this anode in some popular electrolytic oxidations, like chlorate. To get the mass of lead dioxide, weigh the graphite substrate lead dioxide electrode on a balance and subtract from the initial graphite electrode mass. We have 5.9 grams of lead dioxide, which is not bad for 2.8 hours. There we have it TDC viewers, a graphite substrate lead dioxide electrode.